Hi gang, Diana here today. Welcome to the studio. I'm here today with a fun project for you, an art journaling project, and I'm going to be using colored pencils, watercolor pencils from Faber-Castell. I have been playing with them. I never was never really used watercolor pencils, so this was kind of new for me, and I played with them and had so much fun. And I hope you'll come along and have some fun with some really simple watercolor pencil techniques. I have my journal here, and this happens to be a watercolor journal from Stillman and Burn. I did put some additional paper in it, and this is Canson XL watercolor paper. Uh, you can see it is a little buckled, but that's okay. It's just my journal. And so I wanted to show you how I got this effect with watercolor pencils. It's super easy. So let me just show you that. I've done a few examples of this. So I'm going to turn to a fresh page. And you can see here I have my watercolor pencils all lined up in rainbow order, which makes me happy. Now what I'm going to do is just, I'm going to turn this upside down so I can keep my writing um, private. And I, I do like to do this in my journals. I scroll. I don't really write. I don't think about punctuation or capitals or even spelling. I just spill out the words. And I'm going to be doing this with the watercolor pencils in rainbow order. And here I'm just doing my messy, scrolling, scribbly handwriting. I do have something on my mind that I'm writing about. And um, yeah, I don't like sharing that stuff with everybody. My journal is private in some ways. So I am uh, quickly writing along, going through the rainbow. I wrote a lot sloppier than usual because I didn't really want anybody to see what I was writing. So I think this is a great tip. Um, someone shared this with me years ago, and I have done this kind of spill writing with my art journal students over the years. Um, and as you can see now, I'm just taking some water and I'm passing it back and forth along this page. I'm just finishing up this rainbow looking page now and I didn't actually use both of these pages so I have another one ready to roll. Another way I like to work with colored pencils is by dipping them into some water and I just have that <coughs> collapsible cup collapse so that I can just have a little puddle in there. And then as you let that soak a little bit, you just get this wonderful mark that you can use. And I'm just making a little frame here. I'm not sure where I'm going at all. And I'm continuing to add that juicy watercolor line with some wet brush and I add the wet brush and then the watercolor pencil just scribble it in there adding some yellow around the outside of the box as usual I really don't know where this is going uh, it, it's just I think of the next thing that I want to do and I do that and if I'm in the middle of doing something else I just quickly make a note to myself of what is coming next. And I'm just wetting that paper down and dragging the water and the color around on it. And up uh, these watercolor pencils are surprisingly plastic. 
in terms of moving them around. And again, wetting areas and scribbling in some color. It's really fun to do this, I have to say. I had a really good time on this page. I'm going to show you how to make some very simple flowers and I decided I wanted to put some flowers in this little panel right here. I'm just going to leave that be, no gesso or white, just let it be. So this is what I call asterisk flowers. So I've got a dark, let me move these pens out of the way. I've got the, um, this is number 123 colored pencil and I'm literally making asterisks but with more spokes and that's it then I'm going to take a pit pen and this is light yellow glaze 104 and this technique work, works best with a darker pencil watercolor pencil and then a lighter a pen, lighter pit pen, and this is one of the bold ones. So just, I'm basically just melting the colored pencil with the moisture from the pit pen and changing the color and just sort of enriching the color. I wanted to let you know, you can see at the end of my pit pen there that the end the tip is discolored and that's fine. It won't wreck your pen at all or harm it. Just go ahead and scribble it, scribble the uh, pit pen off in another place and even if it's stained, it still won't hurt the color. I've, I've done this for years, worked with pit pens um, and um, well, I usually used to use the Inktense pencils or any kind of dry meltable medium that you can you can use uh, or, what the, or the watercolor pencils that I'm using. And you can see me making this big flower. I usually like to make three of things, uh, three or five. And now I'm just running a little pen around the edges of this just to make it step out a little bit further from the background. Bring it into focus a little more, I guess you could say. I'm going to add one more detail and do one more technique with these pit pens. I am using um, one of the big brush pit pens. Now these are India ink and that means they are permanent which um, also means they're light fast. So that's a good thing. So now I'm just brushing right over this stamp and it's just a little pattern. So now I'm going to huff on it. Just my moist breath just to make sure that it has enough moisture and then I'll stamp it down. And this is a cling mount stamp so I'm using a you can see that how nicely that stamps. I love using these brushes for stamps. Here's a closer look at the page and some of the details on it. You can see the silver pit pen here and I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to give me a thumbs up down there below the video and all the supplies, the link to my blog posts and all my uh, social media is all down there. And while you're down there, you could leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. I'll see you soon. Bye now.